Tell us more about this uh, Western shoot 'em up. Uh, was it? Sorry, du- uh, neon uh, dust. I think neon it. neon to dust. There we go. Yeah. Um, so it's it's like a it's a top down cover looter shooter. Um, it's a twin stick top down game. So it's setting a set in a futuristic uh, Western type world. So. Their, their inspirations have been like, um, have you seen that, old, that movie with uh, Daniel Craig, uh, the Cowboys versus Aliens? It's not mm. a great movie. I story. know that I've seen it. I don't remember too much exactly. from that movie, but yeah, yeah, it's one of those movies. And the setting is is awesome, but the movie itself is kind of terrible. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like. Sci-fi put in the put in the Wild West. Yeah, I think I did see it, but it was a long, long time ago. Yeah, it's ago. a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and there are some like concept styles that are like that, the futuristic Wild West. So uh, I started working on it and thought that would be a really cool theme. Um, and also the like the reload mechanic where you get the gun up on the screen. It's like a six shooter and everything. So yeah. So the idea is the idea is like um, Borderlands meet like Fallout, Fallout 2, but in real time. If everyone played Fallout 2, I haven't played either of those games, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So it's like the focus is on loot and and uh, loot and shooting and and uh, has some roguelike elements and uh, a lot of RPG stuff with skill systems and uh, XP and level ups and stuff. It's actually going to be a story in this one too, right? Or yeah, it's going to be a rough story. I haven't really made it in, but yet, but it's something along the lines of like uh, uh, AI has taken over the world and killed all the humans, hmm. except a few, and then you are cloned back to uh, you cloned back from like being a gunslinger, the most famous gunslinger in the West, cloned back to kill the robot leader. And the, the robots have gone, have, have turned religious, so they have banned all the tech. So they kind of like, well, that's no, no techy stuff left except what was remained before they turned religious. So they conquered the world, turned religious, and basically banned technology. So that's kind of why it's a Wild West kind of theme thing. Yeah, it's kind of stuck in the Wild West, uh, but they're still technology, so it's like, like a. <laughs> you still have the ability to clone because that's sort of like how you're how, when you die they just reclone you right yeah yeah so when you die you just reclone you and then you start over again uh, and then you have, you get to keep like the the, the pro- progress in the character you made so the, the like upgrades in your skill tree and stuff stays so if you lose your loot when you die I assume you'll lose your loot when you die right yeah so can you go back and collect it again or is it just gone no, it's just gone. Uh, you're gonna have some like features to bring it to buy back some of the loot, so you can have a, a, a weapon rebuyer. So it just creates back the weapon you had when you when you died. Mm-hmm. There are three types of weapons right now: and it's a revolver, a shotgun, and rifle. Nice. Um, so, what about, what about for the, like the sound and music for this one? Are you uh, are you gonna take that on, or are you gonna find someone um, else? I think I'm gonna find someone for this um, to really get the theme and the style in. I've, I've gotta find someone who's really really good at the. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna. I kind of want to mix between like the classic Western movie music and something a bit, little bit more. Like techy, something more like a modern day Western music. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Like um, the good, the bad, and the ugly theme. Yeah, that, that's, that's actually pretty, pretty old, old movie, but classic music. Yeah. My father yeah. actually used to watch that movie and listen to that music all the time when I was growing up. It was weird and also, but I, I love that song as a result of it. Yeah, yeah. Very nice.
Oh, yeah. So you're that. not taking like you're not taking your drums uh, to to this game. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I'm gonna leave this to the professionals. I think. <laughs> How does that sound, Gary? No, man. I want to hear this guy play drums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes perhaps. <laughs> nice. So, um. You've been basically making games for your entire career, though. Like, uh, unlike Gary and I, um, you went to school for artwork for games. Um, so that's, I, I mean, I, I refresh my memory. Sort of what's your age range again? I want to ask a rude question, but I'm just going to ask it. So, how yeah, old are you? So, <laughs> yeah, I'm 30. I would, I would always ask my wife this how old am I? You? Uh, I'm 34. Okay, well, you're not that yeah. much younger than Gary, and I we're both 38. Oh, wait, Gary, you're yeah. 39 now, aren't you? I'm 39 now. Oh, yeah. Getting old. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so you're not that much younger than us, then. Uh, so that's, that's kind of awesome, because, like, that stuff wasn't available where Gary and I grew up. Like, there was no art school for games, really. And Sweden's even quite a bit smaller than Canada, so that's pretty awesome that that's available there. Nothing yeah. that we, uh, we knew about anyway. Yeah, nothing we knew about. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, I think I was like, we were the first year from that school I, I went to. Uh, oh, wow. So it was like new school then. Yeah, yeah, it was really new. And uh, they they actually like brought a lot of people into into all kinds of game companies. So all the AAA companies kind of suck in all the, uh, everyone that graduates from that. So they move then, or or they just have offices in Sweden? Um, yeah, no, they have. I think the schools in uh, they have it in Malmo and Stockholm. So two different schools. So southern and mid, middle Sweden, I guess. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So um, you mentioned at the very start that you and a couple friends started your own company yeah so what was that like how did that go wow yeah that was kind of crazy actually so when we when this when school we graduated school we had six months um where we still had in sweden we have like payment we have loans and, and student loans and, and payment from from the government to actually study so we had like a poor salary for six months after we graduated school. So we had six months to make a game, get it profitable and live off it for three guys. So this, what, what year was this when you graduated and first started doing this? Uh, 20, 2011, I think, yeah. 2011. So okay, like, so mobile was still pretty new. Yeah. Um, yeah. And console, the console market would have been harder to get into back then because indie stuff was still yeah, pretty. Was kinda, yeah. Yeah, indie stuff on console was was not re hadn't really picked up yet. Um, and yeah, and mobile was still kind of fresh. And we had, uh, I think, I think like. I think they launched the in-app system for iOS and Android like four or five months after we graduated. So I think our second game had, was one of the first games with actual in-apps on iOS. In-app purchases? So that was kind of crazy. And before that, every, all games were like the $1 paid games like Angry Birds yeah. and all that stuff. So it was in-app purchases, like you did a lot of ad revenue plus in-apps. Yeah, yeah. So and and, I, and yeah, and uh, even that back then, like ad revenue was kind of fresh too. Um, so we we made one game that we actually launched launched with Capcom. Oh wow, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah, Capcom Mobile. We got an email one morning. I I just I was a bit late to to the office and. My my friend who also ran the company was there. Like, hey, we got a we got a email from Capcom Mobile. They 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 want to publish our game. 
<laughs> so it's like, okay. <laughs> so it's kind of like you shit your pants when you get an email like that. You're like, what? Yeah, yeah. So what? What? How? And we were just like totally fresh on this thing. We knew nothing, and we never, have never seen a publisher contract before. So <laughs> everything was like super fresh. Right. Like, getting those fifteen-page. Uh, publisher contracts with all this were weird uh, law English and everything. So, okay. <laughs> I guess we we'll just yeah. this and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get a lawyer to help you with that? No, we had no money for that crap. So we just, <laughs> okay, this should be fine, I guess. <laughs> we signed it. So I'm going to ask, how, how, how did it go then? Uh, subpar, I, I'd say. Subpar. So, um, I mean, it... It paid for, I think it paid for two or three months more uh, because we had already spent those six months. Right. So, so very, very to, stressful then. Yeah. So, uh, and then we got, and everything was kind of fresh back then. So uh, Samsung was starting their own app store too. They had some, they had a store called like Samsung, uh, Samsung Bada store or something. So they, we got an email from them too, and they were asking like, "Oh, do you have any games you want to launch? Uh, we are, we are paying upfront for new games to launch on our store." So we're like, mm. "Yeah, we have uh, we have three games." <laughs> By the <them> mall. <laughs> yeah. So and we 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 asked like how much they could pay, and they I think they paid like a few thousand dollars each per game. Uh, for smaller games, so we said, and then we were like, okay, yeah, we have three games. So we had no no games at all. We didn't have a game. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you have, so you sold them vaporware that you then yeah, quickly had yeah. to build. Yeah, yeah, yep. So and then we're like, oh, what, what are the games gonna be? Yeah, yeah, right. So we have uh, one basketball game, and then we have a. <laughs> so you just like we're shooting from the hip, and like I hope we don't say anything that's like has an incredible scope that we can't deliver on. Yeah, exactly. Well, so, David knows how to hustle. I like that. Yeah, yeah. It was a real hustle just to survive. Uh, and then I think we had we had a month, and I mean. The games back then were super simple. It was kind of like flop, Flappy Bird, that that type of games, like super super basic. Uh, so I think we had a month to finish and send in uh, builds. For Jesus those. Christ! No wonder you're so stressed. That's intense. Yeah, that was super intense. So we made one basketball game where you just like you drag with your finger and, and you know, the ball goes into the hoop. And we call that hoops. Yeah, mm, clever. I think I might have played that. I, I, I 100% am sure I played a game like that. Might yeah, have been yeah. like that game. Yeah, uh, and then that actually got very popular, actually. So it was kind of crazy. And then we made, um, yeah, we made one kind of like a filler. When the, like a, when you, what was it called? Bubble fiddle or something. You tap and hold the screen and it, creates a bubble and there are like things bouncing about and if they hit the bubble when while you are filling it it pops so you you were gonna have to fill a certain amount of the screen with bubbles mm -hmm. uh, and then we made and then yeah and when we, we made those two games uh, and three weeks had passed so those two were games were wrapped finished and sent in and then we had one week to finish the last game so we made a game called Fruit Dodge, where you have a stick figure who walks on a roof, and then there are oranges thrown from the like thrown from the air, basically, and you gotta avoid them by pass, tapping like left or right. <laughs> oh my god, that like sounds yeah. exactly like the mini game from the original Kids of Carindale, where you're on this roof of a skyscraper and tourists are throwing exploding rocks at you, and you just have to avoid these rocks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was like, and, and Samsung were like, "Okay, good, awesome." Game, they didn't care. They just wanted. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't care. Yeah, they just wanted to fill up their store. They didn't care at all. So like, they sent sent us the cash, and we're like, "Okay, we just made four, three games in four weeks." <laughs> That's in, like wow. I, I I'm impressed, and that must have been a very stressful four weeks. 
Yeah, it was. It was a lot of late hours. <laughs> so after hours that, that, did you guys keep going or were you like, we're done, we need to go find jobs? No, no, we, we kept going. We're young and stupid. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we made, since that, uh, the basketball game got quite popular. We made, we made, we thought like, okay, so this is kind of cool. This, I think it got like, on that crappy Samsung store, we got like 50,000 downloads or something. Uh, and the others got like 500 or so basically nothing. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, we, this is kind of popular. So we might make something like this. So we made a game called um, Slam Dunk Basketball, which is basically the same thing, just more levels and missions. And yeah, and the free. Um, in-apps because uh, iOS had just released a new in-app system and uh, a lot of ads, of course. Um, so that was the game we basically lived off for two more years, years because I had a half steady income. Like we could send out an update and add some stuff and then, yeah, we could live off that and make, make more stuff. It's, uh, it's awesome. I, I'm kind yeah. of jealous. <laughs> it sounds like you you lived the life that I wanted to live right after right when I got out of school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it was it was fun, but it was a lot of stress. And oh, we, I'm sure we it was. never had. Yeah, we never had enough money for like to cover more than two or three months in advance. Never, ever. So, so it was you're always, always like, a little okay, What are we gonna release, release next? We gotta get something out now. <laughs> Every right. time. That, that would be pretty stressful. Yeah. So when you were doing this, um, what was like uh, your support network like? Were your parents supportive of all this or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were very supportive. And, and I mean, I met my wife during this time. Um, and she uh, she had a, like a service job and she had more. She had a higher salary than I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically nothing. Making games is a labor of love. Very yeah, true to yeah. this day. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the whole thing, we actually, our, our, our youngest daughter was born. So, I mean, it was, yeah, we were just very, it was a fun, really fun time. Actually. Wow. Yeah. So, I, I'm, I'm going to change gears a little bit because I want to get a little technical. And I've had a question that for you that I've wanted to ask forever. How the hell did you do the the tongue pulling mechanic and pull my tongue? <laughs> oh, yeah, that that was that took a lot of time to actually get that working correctly. Um, Especially like wrapping it around things too. Like that was a uh, that was interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I think as if I remember it correctly. Uh, it's like it, it, it like ray costs. It shoots a ray between between two points, and if it hits something, it checks if if that point is higher up than this, or or or, and then it kind of knows which way it's turning. So it's always like ray costing between points, and if uh, and creating new points like this, like turn it around stuff, and if you then. Like turn it back, it unwraps it. Like okay, so, this point isn't needed anymore. Okay, so you're doing ray casting, and then what was the tongue itself like? How did you render that and make it wrap around things? Um, yeah, so that is, I think that was like a modified curve line render, curve render. Yeah, it was like a modified curve render, so I could adjust the width of it so it can have it small and then like go to thick and just oh. wrap around then it created the triangle. Is that something so, that's just exists in Unity sort of like the base because I haven't done anything like that. Is that just no, something that's... they have like a version of it but it's very crude and it could bug out a lot. So I think I, I bought like a plug, plugin like a, a improved uh, line rendering and then I had to like adjust some stuff in that code to make it work for me for the stuff I wanted to use it. Oh, wow. I mean, that w- it was pretty impressive. Like, you did a good job with that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, I know you like games are, what, six years old now or no? Is yeah, it- yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and I had that question for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking about it. And it's like, I got to ask him that. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, because uh, stuff could also like go into the time. So if you had wrapped it around this thing here, and it was like that you were dragging around here, and it was like a, a line with tongue here, uh, a thing could like go into it and it would bend around that as well. So it, it, it was always like shooting rays between points in the tongue that was long enough. So it could sh be shooting like four or five rays in, in the distance of the tongue to check if, okay, is anything colliding with it now to so like bend it um, automatically if something Um, you're you're not doing a sequel ever, are you? You're not gonna you're not you're not gonna feed your number one fans' desire mm. for. Yeah, yeah. I actually have like a pitch for a sequel, and um, it has been pitched to like a few places. No one, no one. No has one's really kept up yet. And all those jerks. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Call Apple. Tell them you want it. <laughs> yeah. You'll get one sale for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Um, so when you, when do you think um, uh, Neon to Dust will be done? Or is it still got a while yet? Yeah, it's still a while. So I'm kind of shooting for um, like Christmas next year. Something. Christmas 2022. Yeah. Oh, that's a while yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kids of Care no early access might be might be available. Yeah, at the time. It, might be, it might be done. No, we won't be done. Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> won't be done. Uh, it will be wishful thinking. Yeah. Well, Gary, that's a nice coat you're wearing. I don't know. I had to dress up for this occasion. Uh, <laughs> just noticed that now. All right. Um, David, you have been a prolific game developer for quite a few years. What kind of advice would you give either a younger version of yourself or just anyone else who's interested in kind of like getting into this? Because as you know, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I would say like, just do do what you love and, and get, get it going and just check tutorials and Google shit. That's how I survived <laughs> Google shit. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've, I've Googled how to, to like check if a vector three is in the right direction or whatever. How do I aim this thing at my mouse or whatever it could be. So I some mean, simple stuff and like some complicated stuff. I remember when I was first using, uh, learning how to use Unity, I was Googling a bunch of shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I still Google stuff every day. Oh yeah. Just Me because too. like, yeah, you know, you you forget things, and sometimes you haven't done one like calculation thing for a while, and just oh, how how did I figure this out again? And so yeah, I would say like there are lo loads of tutorials out there, and there are lots of like resources and everything. Just figure out what you want to do and start going, and just figure out each problem at a time, and just Google shit. <laughs> Google, 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 nonstop. Yeah, yeah. That's, good. That's actually probably the simplest, but also most important advice. Yeah. Google tells everything. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Gary, you got anything you want to ask? No, I think uh, I think you already asked what I wanted to ask, which was like what he enjoyed most about making games. So, yeah, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, I think uh, it was very similar to you know what Phil liked uh, about making games, which was like just just like the the challenge of um, kind of seeing if something would work, solving the to, solving yeah. the technical problem. Yeah. So, um, what is the hardest technical challenge you think you've faced? Is it the pull my tongue thing, or is it something else? No, I, I actually think it was the pull my tongue thing. That was I, I mean, I wouldn't have picked that issue now. I wouldn't have made that game right now because it was very technical to get like the 
tongue wrapping and and be, being limited by the physics and, and, and just because you're also struggling with the with unity physics and you know how bumpy yeah. that can be and then you get a fortunately i haven't used it much <laughs> yeah okay yeah you're lucky so i mean you know there is minimal but yeah there's some in, yeah, there's some in kids mean, of care now yeah in in all games like physics is super buggy it's super unpredictable and then you're gonna try to figure out the stable solution for a tongue physics for a puzzle game that needs to be stable and not bug out all the time so yeah that was super tricky actually yeah i can i can believe it because that was yeah as i said that was the one thing that i really wanted to ask them I was wondering <laughs> about all these years how the hell did you do the tongue <laughs> yeah and, uh, and i wouldn't i wouldn't want to look back at that code right now because it was like a real mess of of like hacky okay this bugs out for some stupid reason okay just put another patch on it and <laughs> see if it doesn't make... matter that, that's a great thing about games and also the worst thing about games is well nowadays you can have shitty code and still make a great game yeah. back like 20 30 years ago that wouldn't fly because oh. all assembly you needed very efficient code yeah yeah so now you can always like okay this this is stupidly costful to do things this like fix but i gotta do it right now it, it just gotta work so yeah you can get a lot of, get away with a lot of, a lot of stuff these days and because you have like the processing power of the like latest iphone is just insane yeah all right any any last comments you want to make no, it's really fun to be here and really nice speaking to you finally. Yeah, I mean, I'm really happy that we finally get to speak in person. Yeah, same here. I hope we get to meet someday when all this uh, COVID is like calming down. Yeah, you got to come to New York. Yeah. Uh, the city, you know, right now Manhattan's a little sketchy, but um, hopefully that doesn't <laughs> last too long. No. Um, yeah. But, you know, when, when, when life has returned and, you know, things are safer again. Definitely. Yeah. I'd love to have you here or I'll come to Sweden. I've never been. So yeah, you should. It should be fun. We can have some uh, rotten fish. It should be fun. <laughs> oh, we can, oh, great. Yeah. I'm oh, great. definitely looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Love, love rotten fish. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try some of this herring that he's, that he's hard for. I want to see how bad it is. You want to taste the disgusting fish. All right. Yeah. Well, I think um, Gary's going to send you his address and yeah. um, you're going to ship some to him. Yeah. You know what? Well, I'll take some too. <laughs> I, can, I can probably find that find that stuff here. There's, I, I've yeah. seen jars of, of herring. I don't know if that's yeah. the same stuff you're talking about. Yeah, it might be. It should be fermented herring. So it's like fermented uh, herring. Yeah. So I think the process is like the they fish it up, they um, put it in some container, they dig it down in the earth, and you just let it rot for a few months, and then it dig it up again and can it. Sounds perfect. Right. Yeah, you know what? It can't be that bad. <laughs> it can't be that bad. Can't, can't be that bad. <laughs> How bad could it be, right? How bad could yeah. it be? Uh, you take a video of it, Gary, and we'll we'll post yeah, it to the I'll, YouTube I'll channel. Yeah, I'll put it on top of like some some crackers. Yeah. Yeah. This this sounds like it's going to be disgusting. I think we're just going to wrap it up then. And David, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for listening. Please consider liking and subscribing. If you're a fan of our content and would like to support the podcast and our game development, please consider joining our Patreon. Finally, we will end this podcast with music from David's game, Super Glitch Dash. Enjoy!